The United States, meanwhile, tends to refer to these specialized shoes as either sneakers, a term more popular on the East Coast, or tennis shoes, or even tennis. You also call it sneakers or sports ah, shoes. Hello and hi everyone, welcome back to my channel with me again. I hope you guys are doing well, having a great weekend, having a very great day, okay? And first of all, I would like to thanks for those who really support me by subscribing my new channel. And I hope that everyone out there who still not support by subscribing my channel, please do so. Support by subscribing my channel. Even if you like my video, so don't forget to share and like. And also, please do drop your comments. I will reply it soon. And today, uh, I would like to do a reaction video on WatchMojo.com channel. Please do support also this channel by subscribing. And today, we're going to see the top ten of things Americans say that the rest of the world doesn't. Wow, it makes me wonder what is the things. And if you want to know more, let's go with me. Are you ready, guys? So let's go. In America, we actually call a fish chicken of the sea. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 things Americans say that the rest of the world doesn't. I, I plead the fifth. For this list, we'll be going over some of the idioms and turns of phrase idioms. unique to the United States of America. If there's an Americanism we failed to mention, don't have a cow. Tell us in the comments. <laughs> Number 10, John Hancock. Mr. John Callahan, Hancock. I need your John Hancock on these reports. John huh? Hancock. Who is a John it's Hancock? Herbie Hancock. When visitors to the USA get asked for their John Hancock at a bank or during a business deal, chances are they'll look at the questioner sideways. And even if they are from the country, they'll probably do the same thing. I'm here for my test. Where do I sign in? Or should I say, where do I put my John Hancock? <laughs> Actually, I will sign my name. <laughs> It's just a common expression. I know so much history. I just drop it into everyday conversation. Although it sounds like a euphemism or proposition, it's another term for one's signature, as well as a reference to an American historical figure. Hancock. 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 Sound like a bird. John Hancock was one of America's founding fathers and one of the signers of the Declaration signers. of Independence. While everyone else signed their names to it normally, John Hancock's signature was so extravagant, yet legible, that his name was synonymous with signatures in America. Number 9. Oh, that's just why people say John Hancock. He was shielding his eyes from the sun. Knew it when I hit him. When most of the world's English speakers want to say they're attending post-high school secondary education, they'll say they're attending university. Although Americans do have universities too, and will sometimes use the term to refer to a specific institution, the general term for higher education tends to be college instead. Fun fact, a college. magazine no one reads actually rated us the number two best mid-sized liberal arts college in the Northeast, excluding Vermont. Woohoo! I went here! I can tell. This is often inverted elsewhere, though there are exceptions to both cases, depending on the speaker, the region, and so on. But chances are, if someone says that they or someone they know is in college, it's an American saying it. And they as far as oh, college. they're not saying university, they say college. And can you believe it? I got to go to college too. Number eight, plead college. the fifth. Plead the fifth. Plead the fifth. One, two, three, four, fifth. One, two, three, four, fifth. <laughs> Did you? Foreign fans of American courtroom procedurals and legal dramas may wonder what this phrase is all about. It refers yeah. to the Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which explains why the rest of the world doesn't get it. The amendment states that while giving testimony in court, someone can abstain from doing so if it could cause them to incriminate themselves of a crime. How would you respond to his allegations? My client exercises his right to plead the Fifth Amendment. It's a bit of a catch-22 since pleading the fifth sometimes seems as an admission of guilt rather than a way to avoid revealing it. Plead the fifth amendment what? If you answer on the grounds that I what? 
inseminate myself. For this reason, it's often used in conversation Simpson. with men blame without going into specifics. Number seven, ride shotgun. Shotgun. Right, shotgun. Shotgun. Kenny, I call it shotgun. Shotgun. When piling into a car or other vehicle, Americans often refer to riding in the passenger seat as riding shotgun. They even make a game out of it calling out shotgun to determine who gets shotgun. to sit there. Uh, Andy, why don't you go with Ron and help him? I really don't need... Shotgun! I call shotgun. Where are we going? Doesn't matter. Shotgun. Shotgun on all rides for the rest of the day. For the rest of the Shotgun! Life. In any car! <laughs> While the idea certainly conjures the image of someone holding a weapon in the car, the expression predates the automobile. Like many bits of Americana, this idiom has its roots in the Wild West. Stagecoaches were often robbed in transit, and so one of the people riding up front would carry a weapon, frequently a shotgun, for protection. I didn't know it was going to be this easy, Ringo. Drop the Winchester. I only half figured on the stagecoach, Curly. I didn't figure on you at all. Drop the rifle, kid. The roads are safer these days, but the expression stuck. Number six. Expression bachelor stuck. slash bachelorette parties. Bachelor, bachelorette Just, uh, party. Thoughts about the bachelorette party. Okay. Bachelorette party. Easy peasy, Vegas it is. Helen called you, didn't she? Yeah, she got the jump on you. The English-speaking world has a surprisingly wide variety of names for pre-wedding parties, usually divided by gender. There are stag nights, hen nights, and buck stag nights. Night, hen nights. These are sometimes mm -hmm. called parties or weekends, depending on how long the festivities last. However, it's only in the United States, well, and parts of Canada, that people refer to these celebrations as bachelor or bachelorette parties. Regardless of what you call them, though, these parties can range from tame to infamously wild. This is the bachelor party. What? What? What are you talking about? Yeah, it's my bachelor brunch. Go crazy. Get some chocolate chip pancakes, lap dance from the waitress. That's bullshit. <laughs> The idea is to have one last hurrah before Ooh. marriage when you're still it's kind of bachelor a bachelor party? or bachelorette. Depending on how crazy oh. the party gets, you may this want to This one is one. crazy party. Oh, well, now this looks like a good place before for a bachelorette they're party. getting married, is it? Number five, grade level names. Nice grade try, level. freshman. I'll tell you what, just for being such brave little kids, I'm only going to give each of you five licks. Throughout much of the world, each year of education is referred to by year. For example, year seven. But education in the United States, beginning in high school, has specific names for each year of both secondary school and university. Do you know Samantha Baker? Sophomore, right? Yeah, what do you think of her? I don't. Freshman year is year one, sophomore year is year two, junior year is year three, and senior year is the final year. Oh no, I'm gonna be a senior oh. Hey, you're in luck, luscious. You got an arm desk. Go at home. The students in those years are also referred to by these names, although high schoolers are sometimes called 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th Great. graders, too. Before you go blaming Americans for being confusing, you should know that the terminology originated in England at Cambridge and was spread to the U.S. by Harvard benefactor John Harvard. Oh. Number four. Appetizer. It's from Britain, England. Can we get an appetizer? Appetizer. Appetizer? Honey, good news! Haley has been made the Queen of Denmark. Multi-course meals have a lot of terminology for what each part of the meal is called, often derived from French cuisine. Small dishes served before the main course are referred to throughout most of the world as entrees, starters, or sometimes hors d'oeuvres. It's only in America, and again, some parts of Canada, that these mini meals are called appetizers. Appetizers. Only because they serve to the appetite before the meal gets started in earnest. <laughs> More confusing is the fact that Americans refer to the main dish as the entree. So if you're expecting little finger food for your entree, prepare for a surprise. Number three, appetizer. ground floor equals first, first floor. floor. Europeans visiting the U.S. or, again, Canada may find themselves confused when getting directions about which floor to visit. In France, first the ground floor then the first floor, then the second floor, and so on. That's weird. Oh, c'est normal. North Americans frequently use the term ground floor and first floor interchangeably. This can cause some confusion for visitors when trying to find the right floors and elevators. <laughs> It'd be confused to find, oh my goodness. Thank you. 
Much of the world refers to the first floor above ground level as the first floor or story, essentially oh, treating the ground floor look as at floor her zero. Hair. Although some American buildings will keep an international naming format, the majority don't. So make sure you're keeping the correct count. Oh. All slow. But here in Asia, we also like have a ground floor. Number two. Lower Stars ground also. Slash tennis shoes. These shoes are so uncomfortable! They're dress sneakers, you're not supposed to run in them! The world Lower has a plethora ground. of words for athletic footwear. The UK, Canada, and some other English-speaking countries call them trainers, runners, running shoes, or sometimes basketball running shoes. Running shoes. There's plenty more, too. Whoa, watch the new kicks. But you have another pair of new sneakers? The United States, meanwhile, tends to refer to these specialized shoes as either sneakers, a term more popular on the East Coast, or tennis shoes, or even tennis. You also call it sneakers or sports ah, shoes. Myself up. Again, there are a ton of variations or alternatives, but these labels are most common in the USA compared to elsewhere. This is another instance where Americans can thank Britain, at least for the term tennis shoes. As British Tennis aristocrats shoes. wore the rubber soled footwear to play their favorite sport. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, soccer. To okay. most human beings, the sport where you hit the ball with your foot is naturally referred to as football. football. However, the British came up with the name soccer as a nickname for association football to differentiate it from rugby football. When the sports crossed the pond, Americans developed their own spin on rugby called gridiron football, which they just keep calling football. The name soccer stuck too, since of the two, gridiron was far more popular. Open wide for some soccer! The Cabinet of Soccer Association is coming the difference this between it's American and also British. <laughs> you bet. Soccer is also used in other countries with their own spins on rugby football, such as Australia and Canada. Jeez, you're big for a lady. You could play for the 49ers. Well, I was a quarterback, but that's European football, dear. Soccer? Yes, you play soccer too? Yeah. We do understand okay. why people are frustrated about American football's name, though. Only few players even touch the ball Somewhat, with their feet. Sometimes we get confused on this. Picks? Check out this other. Wow, I do really like this video because this is the first time I know and I heard about this American um, says that sometimes I can't relate or I can't understand it all. But um, most of them is saying by American but not the rest of the world doesn't say about it and this video has really helped us really really good if you are going if we are going to america this kind of words uh, something that uh, can help me to figure out about all the americans right and this is first time i know about the john hancock it's, act, uh, it's actually referred to the signature oh my goodness this is first time uh, if i go to america if people say to you especially on a bank, John Hancock, it referred to the signature. That's it. <laughs> and I also know about the Bachelor and Bachelorette Party. And most of the American, uh, well, what I, uh, I saw just now is more about like, um, very, very, like, very wild party. It's like Bachelorette. And then I know about the bachelor party and we we also have a we call a pre-wedding party or we call it a bachelor and bachelorette but, but it's not refer like like what Americans do like what we saw in a video just now and uh, some more is appetizers we also have we also use appetizers uh, terms uh, on our menu as well but not or not most of the restaurant but normally we Asian just go for the um, main course and appetizers is something like uh, a starter, right? it's more like a starter and uh, most of the appetizer and starter are referred to the restaurant most of um, normal normal restaurant we're not serving um, appetizers or we call it starters but uh, for Malaysian we call it appetizer 
and we also learn from American and British as well. We adapt from all of you, right? And uh, it's very interesting for me to know about the words that Americans say, but the world, the rest of the world doesn't say it about it. And uh, very, very uh, something that I know, some knowledge for me as well. Uh, for me, who doesn't know about it, and today I know what it means. <laughs> it's a bit confused for me as well. If you want to know, first grader, to second grader, third grader. But here in my place, in my country, we call it uh, standard one, standard two, standard three, and after standard six, we go for um, form one, form two. It's a primary and secondary school. Then after you finish your secondary school, then you go to the university and college. Yeah. You see, they, they, they must they have a lot of difference about uh, educational system in in United States and also the UK and also Malaysia but we Malaysia most probably adopted a, a bit of uh, Britain Britain system uh, you know, some some kind of that and I do really like this kind of videos and um, it really gave me a lot of information the things that I didn't know previously I didn't know before I watched this I didn't know but before and after I watch, I know more very well uh, American uh, normal says, you know 10, 10, 10 things that American says but I doesn't say and the rest world doesn't say and, and today we know what is the, the, the say, the, the words that they say and really interactive and really, um, uh, you know, giving us some new information new knowledge about americans i really do appreciate this kind of videos okay i think that's it for now and i hope to see you soon uh, for my next video and as uh, usual please do if you like my video please do uh, share and also like my video if you're still not yet subscribing my video please do support by subscribing my channel okay until we meet again take care of yourself Ta da everyone you went away.